my goal is to make learning fun and interesting because knowledge is power. Are you familiar with STEM? You know, science, technology, engineering, and math. Representation in STEM is critical for the success of our nation and communities across our country. Black or African American representation is significantly underrepresented in STEM fields such as engineering, physics, medicine, and chemistry. Much of this underrepresentation can be traced to historical discrimination that prevented access to these fields. Grassroots efforts at the community level have also lacked the initiative and motivation required to make a difference. Motivation and change begin with each of us. In an effort to do our part to help improve these stats, we interviewed a brilliant chemist to help inspire you, the Project Kids Nation, to view professions in STEM as options for future careers. Well, I hope you enjoy today's interview, and I hope it makes an impact. Today, we continue our streak of extraordinary and multi-talented guests joining us for our Project Kids interview series. We do our best to bring you fascinating and interesting people who are doing great things professionally and in their community. Before we get into today's interview, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. So today we are fortunate to have a professor of physical chemistry in the house. I imagine that some of you are already scratching your heads, but that's all right. We have an expert here to help us understand what physical chemistry is all about. Marion R. Martin, PhD, is an assistant teaching professor in the chemistry department at North Carolina State. Dr. Martin was born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina, the middle of three boys to Rick and Fleeta Martin. He developed a passion for math and science at an early age. He graduated summa cum laude with a BS degree in chemistry from Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, and was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. He was also a four-year letterman on the football team serving as captain his senior year. He was recognized as a Football Foundation National Scholar Athlete for his work on and off the field. After completing his master's degree in chemistry, he moved to Stanford to complete his PhD. He returned to his alma mater, Furman University, in 2010 as an assistant professor in the chemistry department before relocating to North Carolina State in 2019. Marion currently lives in Riley with his wife, Casey Crisp. In his free time, he enjoys being an active member of his church, reading, meditating, working out, and watching just about any sport on TV. Without further ado, please give a warm Prodigy Kids welcome to Dr. Marion Martin. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being with us today. So how does it feel to be our featured guest? Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to talk about some of the things I've learned, some of the places I've been, and, you know, again, be able to share it with you and, and the other folks who are joining us. Wonderful. So today we're going to talk about science, your love of chemistry, and football. Let's start by talking a little about your early interest in science. What was it about science that interested you the most when you were a kid? That's a great question. I think part of it early on was just being able to explore and understand how the world around me works. I remember uh, I was maybe seven or eight and um, my older brother, Lionel, got a chemistry set. And so he was playing around with that, doing different experiments. And he let me and my younger brother, Jonathan, play with it a little bit, just a little bit, just enough to uh, scratch our itch, but not, not so much that we would break anything. Uh, but just some of those early playing around with some of those things early on really, you know, wanted me to help, help me uh, or really encouraged me to think about how do I understand the world around me um, and, and how we interact with it. 
How important is it to have people around you, especially when you're a kid like me, to nurture and encourage you to study hard in school? I think it's very important. Uh, I was fortunate that my parents, uh, my mother, uh, she, she is an educator. She taught first and second grade for a long time. And then also uh, she was a reading specialist. So education has always been important in our family. My father always encouraged us to work hard in school, do our best in school, uh, and that if we did that, then that would open up opportunities from us down the road. As I mentioned, my older brother, uh, he's four years older than me. I remember watching him take classes like geometry and calculus and chemistry, kind of inspired me to want to be able to take those classes, algebra. Uh, and so I always looked up to him and he kind of would teach me things and show me things. Um, and then even outside of my family, um, when I was doing, say, when I was doing my PhD, similar idea. I had a group of people uh, that we would get together on a regular basis and ask each other, okay, what are you making progress on your work, on your project? If you're not making progress, what is uh, kind of causing you trouble towards making progress? Asking each other, what could we be doing to hold each other accountable um, that we might meet, meet our goals? So I think it's very important to have folks around you, encouraging you, challenging you, uh, supporting you uh, as you go through your educational experiences. When did you realize that you were smarter than everyone else? I heard that your classmates in high school thought you were a genius. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when, when I kind of sensed that. I mean, I, I look at my high school class and I had a lot of folks who were doing some interesting things now. Uh, so I don't know if I was the smartest. I guess I certainly I graduated uh, with one of the highest GPAs in my class and was able to give a speech at my graduation. But when I look at some of my classmates, some of the things they're doing, I have uh, one classmate who's a surgeon, um, colorectal cancer surgeon. I have several classmates who are lawyers. Uh, so there was a lot of smart folks. I think we were, we were all fortunate to have each other to encourage each other and push each other to, to do our best. So you have a Bachelor of Science and a master's degree in chemistry. For those not familiar with chemistry, give a brief explanation of what it is. So chemistry has to do with understanding matter. So things that we can touch and feel uh, and the transformations that it undergoes. So we can go from uh, one chemical to another. So I, I probably a good example of chemistry is, say, burning, uh, you know, it's getting warm out now, but if we were to burn fire um, in, a, in a fire pit, burning wood. So what we have is a chemical reaction where the fuel is reacting with oxygen. And during that process, there is the release of energy. And that's what we have. And it's what it's, um, a process called combustion. And so what we see, again, is we have matter undergoing some sort of physical transformation, and then also some amount of energy being transferred in that process. And then can we understand what's happening? And more importantly, can we use what's happening in a useful way? You have a PhD in physical chemistry. What exactly is physical chemistry? Right, that's a great question. So chemistry, we think about chemistry, um, we break that down into kind of five subgroups. Um, one subgroup is organic chemistry. So in organic chemistry, we're trying to say synthesize new materials, maybe synthesizing new drugs would maybe be something you might have, have think about. Um, synthesi synthesizing uh, vaccines, things of that nature. So that's organic chemistry. Then we have inorganic chemistry. A lot of that has to do with using metals and chemical processes. Then we have analytical chemistry that has to do with measuring uh, the amounts of chemical presence. So uh, we have, say, a, a water pollution or issue with water pollution, or we want to measure what's present in the water. We have biochemistry, uh, which looks at DNA. So, you know, where a lot of our information for our body is stored, understanding that. And then physical chemistry kind of runs throughout all of these where we can use light um, to study uh, matter. We can use light to determine how much of a chemical is present what chemical is present. Um, and so using things like lasers, um, you know, you maybe have seen like a laser pointer 
but we can go into a laboratory. We have pretty high power lasers, which lets us study different things about chemical systems. And then we also, um, so, so th that's what, and that's kind of what I did in, in my research was using light to understand very simple, simple chemical processes. And then once we understand one process, then maybe that'll help us predict what would happen in another process. And so that's what physical chemistry is, using light to study matter. And we, um, one way we experience light, so you got that uh, red shirt on, right? So light that has to do with what light is being absorbed by your shirt, what light is not being absorbed, and then that results in the color of your shirt. So that's another example of physical chemistry. What are some everyday things, you know, things we use at home or at school that were developed using physical chemistry? Yeah, so one, uh, we're thinking about lasers. So I went to the grocery store today, and when you check out and you're scanning your uh, products, there's a laser that was developed in the laboratory, but now we use it, yeah, just in the grocery store, being able to measure uh, or determine the cost by using a barcode, but that also is using, that's just using a laser system uh, to do that. Another example, physical chemistry, uh, this time of year, we're starting to see more rain. So what people will do is they'll put rain X on their windshield. So that rain X changes the chemical um, makeup of the surface. So instead of the water kind of sticking to the glass, we can see the water beating up. Same thing with car wax. Uh, those are a couple examples of physical chemistry in everyday life. Many kids don't understand the importance of learning math and science. How can parents, teachers, and educators better link math and science to its practical application in the real world? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I've really tried to do a lot more in my classes is to give, as you just asked, a great question. What are some practical examples of these things? And so I think as early on as we can get started, uh, students to see some of these practical applications uh, is helpful. Another thing is to give students more hands-on opportunities to do very simple science projects. So a lot of times we get used to sitting in the classroom or virtually remotely these days, if, if so, so be it, um, and not necessarily getting our hands and, and doing things. Instead, we're spending a lot of time, say, reading about science. Uh, and so I think another thing is to just try to get students, you know, whether it's getting them a chemistry set, whatever, and just letting them play around with that and discover things on their own. We want to have students thinking about how can I be creative? How can I uh, investigate actual chemical systems using their hands uh, and not just thinking about it as me reading a textbook and me being able to type numbers into a calculator, but really understanding what it is to do science. In your biography, you mentioned that you were an accomplished football player in college. How did football prepare you for your life as a chemist? Well, you know, <laughs> I think one of the couple of things, um, being part of a team was very important, is, continues to be very important. Um, I knew, well, so when, in college I played linebacker and I was supposed to do my job as a linebacker. If I tried to do what the defense alignment was supposed to do, or if I tried to do what the cornerback was supposed to do, we were going to have a problem because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. We go to practice, we do a set of drills, and as we do on those drills, you know, our coach would say, okay, Marion, that was good that you did this, but next time I want you to do that, right? So I was used to getting feedback. I was used to getting correction. And so when I go into the laboratory or when I went into the laboratory as an undergraduate or a graduate student, and I might try and experiment a certain way, well, my advisor would say, okay, that didn't work. Maybe you should try it this way, right? And so I was already used to getting coached, already used to being advised about how I could change uh, what I was doing and not being so set in my ways, like I know everything, but instead being willing to be coached or mentored. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations for how we can get more black youth to see math and science as a career path? Yeah, math, like I mentioned, giving students more hands-on opportunities. Um, another thing is just exposing, like you're doing a great thing here, letting them know that being a scientist is something that black people do. I don't know that a lot of students are aware of that. 
So tell the Project is Nation how they can connect with you. So I, I'm working on a social media present. I don't quite have Twitter yet, but I think I will be getting Twitter soon. Um, I do have LinkedIn. And then you can also uh, find me I'm on, through the North Carolina State website. Um, the chemistry website be a good place to kind of learn some things about other things that are happening uh, at NC State. Well, thank you for taking time to talk with us today. If you enjoyed today's interview, be sure to like to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and rise up. Bye!